Mario. I'm Thrond here, and I'm here with a very special package from Romania and Amandi Christian. Amandi Christian is one of our bladesmiths. He's a Dacian reenactor and historian. He likes to keep up his historical uh, heritage by making excellent blades, and he sent us a banana. Uh, no, it's not a banana, but my sons, the Viking kids, have been calling it a banana since it's gotten here and we're going to open this up today. Uh, very interesting weapon, I'm pretty sure, because he's the one who sent us the uh, Dacian Falks that we've tested in a lot of videos, and we've tested it on analog ballistics gel heads. It cut exceptionally well through the skull. It did an excellent job on hard materials, and it was really good on gambesons and multiple layers of cloth. It had a duel with the katana. And historically, due to Trajan's Wall and the accounts of the Romans, the uh, Dacian Falx actually was as famous as the katana historically. So this blade has lived up to its name. He's done an excellent job producing this. Even in our video when we uh, tested the Dacian Falx against the Tose Gusuku armor from Iron Mountain Armory on Patreon. If you'd like to go by there and check that out, it's a Patreon only special. It was able to pierce through the Kabuto when a lot of things were not. Uh, you might want to see that and see how that turns out. Uh, we also have our Sika here that he produced. He also sent a very nice uh, fillet knife or a kitchen knife, a chef's knife, excellent, razor sharp. This blade here, the Sika, there was some debate historically, even within his group, their hist historical group, whether it was a weapon or not, or was it just ceremonial uh, and carried by the warriors, because we only find them in warriors' graves. It's not an agricultural implement. But in our video, we tested on analog ballistic shell heads, so as long as your opponent wasn't super heavily armored or had uh, openings, uh, niches, or gaps, chinks in their armor where you could get in there and just cut straight in, yeah, this would be a devastating weapon and we prove that easily. Not maybe for thrusting, but for cutting, it is exceptional, this shape of blade. Today, we are gonna start opening this up and we have our big banana, is what it looks like. That's uh, it's just truly what it looks like. And uh, see what we have inside. And I've been told it's going to be a surprising uh, discovery. She'll start trying to open this up and hopefully not damage what's inside. He packs the greatest. I'm sorry, but out of all the people that ship us things here at the Thane Thrand YouTube channel, Amanda Christian has the most excellent packing. And one of the interesting facts about uh, where he lives in Romania, his shop is actually uh, right up the street from one of Vlad Dracula's castles, uh, Tergovesti. So I don't think you can get any more Romanian than that. We remove the banana skin. And amazingly enough, it's still the same color as banana on the inside. It's white! <laughs> I feel like a happy little monkey. Do you think this is like a Romanian joke? I didn't think, but I didn't think bananas were uh, indigenous to Romania. Ooh, lots of bubble wrap. Viking kids show love that. Should I hide it? Maybe. We're back to the banana theme again. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. He always sends excellent fabrics, uh, all of our kinds of little uh, knickknacks from uh, Romania when he sends stuff to me. Very pleasing. A matter of fact, the cloth he sent this wrapped in, I liked so so much. I have used it for a uh, cloak, like a really light cloak. Works great with a brooch. 
put this up so no one gets cut. At this point, it's just unrolling it. Now, this is going to be the fun part here, seeing what we have inside. Ooh. This is beautiful. And the smell of leather. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful baldric style design to hold, uh, to hold it with. So it should be easy to draw quickly, set up this way. Oh, we have to move this up a hair. And let's look at the details on this. I'm assuming that this tag here, which I'm sure Caddy will show you a close up of it, is his friend who did the leather work. And if you look right here, it's got my name in runes, Thrant. That's the uh, younger Futhark. So no, there is no N in here because the N would be implied in the shorthand of the uh, younger Futhark instead of using elder Futhark the way I told him my name was spelled. The detail on the uh, sheath, the leather on the outside that's stitched on the wooden uh, uh, scabbard is beautiful. And then the detail on the handle is beautiful. It matches the actual Falx, the detail he does, the wood burning. And this is a hand and a half or one-handed version. And the argument a lot of people would have is these are always two-handed. This could be used two-handed, but it's not set up with the extremely long grip like you see on this one. The blade is almost as long. It's it, the blade is almost as long. It is the exact same length. It has more of a piercing point to it. It seems like it seems even more uh, uh, tapered. The profile taper. It is a back edge, of course. The way they're shaped, uh, like a. Uh, triangular uh, cross section where the back is broad and it comes to a really fine edge and this is razor sharp. This would work with a shield just like using a falcata or a copus, uh, something to go over another shield and into somebody, this would be devastating with a Dacian shield. Some people speculated that this was an oddity. It was found about 100 to 200 years after Trajan's Wall. So this wasn't the same Falx that you had at this time period. 100 to 200 years, a lot of evolution could have taken place. And I'm assuming that this is what the blade evolved into to be used with a shield and not be as bulky and have the extra length of handle and be used one-handed. So with a shield and armor and this blade, I think this would be a superior blade fighting sword and shield style to reach around your opponent and get him without him even expecting it around his defenses or even cut into his defenses slightly into the shield edge and poke directly into him. We need to test that out. We need to see how it compares with its heavier two-handed uh, big brother, so to speak, and see what it can do. So we're going to do that soon. It's a beautiful blade. I am totally impressed and amazed with the uh, system we have here. Let me go ahead and see if I can put this on for carrying it. The detail on this leather, on this uh, belt or harness to uh, carry it properly is amazing. I feel like a Dacian gunfighter or something here, the way it's set up. Beautiful. Have to get just right on the adjustment because it's curved, the blade, the way the blade's curved to draw it quick and easily, but I think that that's probably the fastest and easiest you're gonna be able to draw a blade this curved. But like I said, that curvature is like a beak coming over anything that you cut. You're probably gonna get pierced with that point, and that is devastating. We've already seen what it can do to uh, 18 gauge plate, such as the uh, Japanese armor. And I can just see this is gonna be amazing already. 
It's a lighter version compared to our uh, original Falx that we tested, but I don't think that's going to uh, hamper it much in its cutting ability and its ability to work properly. I think it's going to work very well. I love the scabbard. I love the way it's actually dropped down and hung. Actually, I could wear the belt a bit higher is what I'm assuming. Probably up here. And still be able to draw it nicely. And the curvature, if you had a shield here, you could still pull it out behind your shield and have it ready to go. So it's pretty, pretty nice. I like it. Beautiful blade. Can't wait to test this. Thank you so much, Amandi Christian. Uh, I am very well pleased with it. The work is spectacular. I shall put in the uh, description down below all the links to get a hold of Amandi Christian if you're interested in his fine blades like the Sika, the Falx, and this version of the Falx, which is a later century version from uh, Romania. Uh, I will go ahead and put that down below and I'll try to find out his friend's name, the leather worker in case you just want him to do some kind of leather work for you. Because I'm sure they work together to do stuff like this and this is the most spectacular gift I have gotten in a very, very long time. If you look at the attention to detail and how well it's stitched and how well the leather's tooled and how it looks very, very period. It looks like something you would see back in the day, not just a modern reproduction. Uh, I mean, I can't thank you enough, Amanda Christian, and I hope everybody else has enjoyed me opening this today. And I can't wait to get back with you and uh, test this out. And be sure, if you haven't seen it, to go by and check out our Warbo video. Uh, we did an 85 to 105 pound Warbo, depending on the draw. And it performed exceptionally well against male, gambeson, and the plate. I'm sorry, it did more to the plate than I th was expecting. Uh, plate did very well. But anyway, you might want to go by and check that out. And as always, I hope you've enjoyed our video. Farvel.